Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at the awkward machine from Hack the Box, and we have this neat uh, scenario where I can do a awk file, a awk injection, so injection into an awk command, um, but the place I do the injection is the user field in the JWT, which I have the signing secret for. Um, so I can create a malicious cookie, put that cookie in my in my uh, API call, and get back whatever file I want. Um, and so I'm going to show the different pieces of that and then show how we put all of that together. First, we'll do it manually to get a file, read Etsy hostname, um, but then we'll write it into a Python script that just takes a file and uh, takes a file name and then either displays it to the screen or if it's a binary file, allows me to write it to a file so I can save it and use it later. Um, hopefully it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's do a little overview of what we've got and what's going to lead to this vulnerability. Um, I've got this Hat Valley website here. And I've managed to get a username. So I actually have it saved here, Christopher Jones, and the password Chris123. Um, I can log in here and I get this dashboard, which is great. Um, the thing we're going to need to pay attention to here is I'm logging in. So you go to storage here and developer tools. Um, I get this uh, token here, cookie here called token. Um, it looks very much like a JWT, the Java web token. Uh, in fact, we can grab it. Just take a look at it. Control C to copy. Uh, JWT.io, and if we come down to the bottom here, somewhere here, there we go, and Control A, Control V, we can see it's an HS256 uh, type JWT. It's got a username and an IAT, which is the issued at time, um, and then we've got you know an HMAC. If we, if we it says invalid signature because we've not put the secret in there. If we had the secret, we could validate it. Um, you always have to be careful with JWT.io because I can type any secret in here. I can type like not the and like, like I'm, I'm, I'm messing it up, but if I do OXDF here, um, you can see it says it's valid, but this is no longer the cookie I pasted in. It's now updated it. This is now updated to that secret. So um, if I come back here, oops, I'm saying, go back to storage, let's grab that cookie again, and come back to JWTIO, paste. Now it says it's wrong. So you always want to set, if you want to check your secrets on, you always want to set your secret first and then put your cookie in and make, it'll tell you it's valid or not. I don't, this is why I'm not going to use this site for validation, um, but it's a good way to visualize what the data and things. All right, so um, we, we see what the format of the cookie, um, we can actually throw this cookie into Hashcat and it will crack and we'll get the secret. Um, and I could validate that on JWTIO. I'm going to show you, I like to use uh, Python for this. So we'll just import JWT. Let's say token equals, and let's grab our token, our token, I believe, like that. And then we can do a secret equals, you don't have to define these variables, but it's kind of a clean uh, way to do it. It's beanie123, beanie123. And so now we can say jwt.decode uh, token secret like this, and it, it works. Um, now, what would it be like if we did like not the real secret? So if we said the secret was OXDF, um, it crashes. So the decode function will not run if you don't give it the correct secret. Um, now you can you can specify you want to do that if you just want to get the information out of it. Um, but that's you know we can see here we do have the correct secret. Um, the other piece of information we need is we have this Hat Valley API, and it's a Express API documentation, which actually gives us the, the server side methods for how the different API functions are handled. Um, and specifically, there's a couple of them, but we'll look at the, uh, let's see, what was it? API, I believe it was like all leave, all leave here. Um, right away, we can be, we can catch this exec call. This is small, maybe a little bigger. Um, exec is dangerous. Um, it's actually making, a, it's calling the shell to call awk um, on the user. Uh, and then it's pa against the CSV file. Um, and if we look, let's see, where's user set? Uh, up here, user set to null, and then it's from the decoded token, it's getting the use the token dot username. So we actually see this up here, um, username. So it's going to get the username right out of the token. Um, and right away, whenever I see exec like this, I'm thinking, can I do command injection? But um, there's a, there's this bad character list here that is then checked and you know if the, if the bad character if you have bad characters in your username it will fail and send a 500 and we, with with the limit of all of these bad characters um, i wasn't able to find a command injection that i could use um, but i was able to find an awk injection so let's take a look at this um I see i wonder if we can get these both on the same screen um, 
do. Okay, so uh, we'll drop out, of, or we'll get a new terminal here. Um, if I've got a file here, uh, let's see, so let's go into, um, there we go. I've got this hashes file, um, and it's just the hashes for the user on the site. Um, and so if we look how they're using awk, we can do awk, and then if we do Chris, like this, and then we do hashes, it's only going to print the lines that have Chris in it. So that's what it's doing here is it's using awk on the CSV file for leave requests. So presumably each line is one leave request and it's grabbing the leave requests that have the username in there. Not the greatest way to do it. Like, I mean, if I said leave request because I'm going on holiday with IPSEC, um, then this whole line would, and then you search for IPSEC, my request would show up. So this is, I mean, this is a bad way to do it, but it's an interesting uh, exploitation exercise at least. Um, so we control what's between these slashes. And so, and actually we should look at what they're actually, I should be a little more detailed. It's doing it like this. Um, so we control this between the slashes. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to put empty like that so that we search all lines. And then we're gonna put a space. And then we're gonna put the file we want. So let's say we want like Etsy host name. And then we're gonna put a space and then we're gonna put a quote. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna run awk searching for anything on Etsy host name slash and hashes. If we run this, oops, you can see we get Etsy hostname, hacky. We get an error because it's a directory. That's weird. And it's, it's not really an error. It's a warning and it skips it. And then we get hashes. Um, so we just figured we just basically have an awk injection where we can read files. Um, we can make this a little bit nicer if we do like slash OXDF. Now it actually fails here. Um, and what's even better is this is sent to standard out and this is sent to standard error. So the only thing sent to standard out and therefore the only thing captured here and sent back, it's going to be this first one. So now we've effectively said, give me the file. I don't want the other stuff. Don't, I don't need the other stuff. Don't show me that. Um, so, cause I don't really care about the leave request, right? Um, so we've effectively got a way to do that. Um, so let's see if we can do that actually on the site, not just on my directory using JWTs. So we're back here in Python and we're going to say like user data, oops, data equals, and then we'll do a username and the username is going to be let's make it an f string slash close quote space etsy host name space um the next thing we're trying to do which is like slash oxdf like that and then oh, no close there because then it's going to add slash close to the end of that and we'll be good like this um so now we can say token equals jwt dot encode and we're going to do user data. We're going to do the, the, the pass, the uh, secret key, beanie, one, two, three, beanie. Uh, I guess we have that already it's called secret. Let's do secret. And we're going to need to give it, I, I believe we need to give it an algorithm. Let's try. Oh, maybe not. So token looks good. Um, let's grab this. I'm just kind of, uh, I'm kind of curious to see what this looks like if we throw this in uh, JWT. Yeah, so it did do the algorithm and everything, and we have our everything looks good. So we'll grab this token. We've got it actually. Come over here to, or I guess we can do it with curl. We'll do curl um, HTTP hat valley dot hack the box slash API slash all leave minus B token equals minus B is how you set a cookie with curl. That. And we get back the host name. Um, so we've shown that we can do this. Now, each time I want to write a file, I'm going to have to go in here, generate the token, et cetera. I, that's a pain. I don't want to do that, right? So um, we will, let's go into the file here. We'll take um, vim read.py. Uh, we'll do user bin env python3. We're going to need the uh, JWT library. Actually, let's do this in code. Um, code. Just be a little bit easier here. Read.py. Okay, so we're gonna need that. Um, we're gonna need the requests library to make web requests. And we're gonna need sys because I'm gonna wanna pass in the file I wanna read from the command line. And that's pretty what we do with sys. So what can do secret equals one, two, three, beanie, one, two, three. We can do uh, user data equals username, colon. And now this is going to be our slash close. Then we'll have sys.argv1, and then we'll say space, and then we're gonna do close the quote, 
uh, slash OXDF so that that fails like that. Uh, we don't need that close there, just like that. Um, so now we can say token equals JWT dot code user data secret. Uh, and we can leave it like that. And then we can do response equals requests dot Git and our URL was HTTP hat valley dot hack the box slash API slash all leave. That looks good. And now our cookies equals we can do token find that in quotes token token like that. And I think let's see. It might want token. We might. I don't know if we need to decode token or not. Let's. We'll leave it like that for now and try it. And then we can just do print response.txt. And let's give this a run. Python read.py Etsy hostname. Okay. So the args. I bet you this is what we're looking at. Uh, where are we? In. We're on our line twelve here. Um, args must be. Bytes or tuple of bytes, not a string. Well, is that this one? Um, I'm going to try that decode. This is one of those uh, Python error messages that is not trivial. Yeah, that we got it. Okay. Um, it doesn't want bytes here. Um, and so that's what's. Oh, I, and specifically, it's checking cookie.value. Um, or starts with this and but the starts with um, and ends with strings are strings, not bytes. And so it's confused because it's saying if you're going to compare against strings or against bytes, which is what I passed in, then these ends with things must be bytes. And that's why it's saying it must be bytes, not strings. But really what the answer then is if we pass in a string, it'll compare nicely and it'll work just fine. Um, so we can do Etsy hostname. Uh, we can do Etsy uh, password and get that. Um, and it works nicely. Um, the only other thing to, get, to think about would be, what if I want to download a binary file, right? So if I want to do like uh, bin bash, and this could be scary, um, it might just crash. Oh no, here we go. Uh, it's junk, right? And I don't think, I don't, I think if I try to just like pipe that output to something, it's not going to be very happy. Um, so what I'm going to do here, come up here and we'll add up, because we are going to need the ability later in the box to download a binary file. Um, I'm going to say if len sys.rg is equal to three and sys.rgv2 is equal to download. This is a very, I mean, I really could use like arg parse and everything, but this just seems good for now. I will with uh, open sys.rgv. One, so that's like the file name dot split on, we're gonna split it on slashes. So that we just get the file name. So like if it was SD password, I would just get PASWD. Um, again, this is kind of crude. We could add that, we, we could do like a whole arg. If we we're making like a fancy script, we could add an arg parse where you pass in the output file name and all those things. But like, we're, we're just kind of doing this quick and dirty. Um, so we'll do as F and we'll do F dot write response. So this dot content, is that right? It's not telling me. We're going to try it. And then we can say else print response. So now if we do the password. We get his password. If we his password download, and we do vim password. We get it the password. That's looking good. Uh, and then what about if we do, um, we already did bin bash download. And so presumably we're going to get file bash right here. We get an elf. It's looking good. If we run bash, uh, permission change mod plus X, uh, is that going to work? Um, so it's not happy with the glibc versions. That's because I've got a version of bash from a different OS than the bash I'm using, but it looks like I got bash. So that it looks like I got an intact file and that's really what I was going for here. Um, I think that's it. Uh, this was kind of a simple script to write, but I still thought it might be worth showing how we pull it together in a video. And uh, yeah, 
for for the full awkward solution, go check out the blog post where I've got all the details. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.